Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Anime Ramble. Today I got for you Demon Slayer Season 2 Episode 1. What is going on? Well, this has been a long time coming. We've all been waiting for it. It's finally here. We finally get new episodes and the Entertainment District arc is about to continue now. So the episode opens up with the finale of the Rengoku and Akaza fight, right? The death of Rengoku, the news begins spreading very quick. We see the crows, they're all reporting to the likes of Senjuro, his brother, and Ubiyashiki. And Ubiyashiki got the news of Rengoku's death, but he also got the news of the last words that Tanjiro spoke to Akaza, right? He's calling him a coward. He's saying how they always have to fight them when they have the advantage, saying that he needs to stay and fight him during the daylight. Just some really off the wall nonsense rhetoric that's coming from Tanjiro because let's be honest right you fight them during the nighttime you're not gonna instantly combust and turn to dust right if he stays and fights you during the daylight well it's not a fight at that time it's a sacrifice right it's suicide I don't think that's what he wants and you doing all of these things yelling at him to stay during the daylight throwing your sword by the way during this episode his sword gets completely destroyed Right, he throws that at Akaza, Akaza removes it, he heals up, he shatters it, and now Tanjiro's out of a weapon that he's more than likely gonna have to get replaced at some point in the future. Flash forward, we get through the opening, which leads us to following the viewpoint of this little boy heading home, who we later find out is the adoptive son of this family who runs, I guess, this massive drug company or this pharmaceutical company. And through the dialogue of the parents sitting and having dinner with a friend of the family, we learn that this child has a rare skin condition that doesn't allow for him to go out during the daylight. He can only stay out at night, so pretty much he's nocturnal. But this boy is so bright and so intelligent, so well-mannered that this father who adopted him is lining him up to take over the company. But before he takes over the company, it's his pharmaceutical company's job to try to find a cure for this boy. Well, there are two problems that come up with this boy. The first being is what I just mentioned, he's basically allergic to sunlight. The second is, is what I think all of us can pretty much guarantee we already knew, is that this boy is music, okay? Shapeshift, he's living out this weird fantasy of being a child, I guess a childhood that he never had growing up as a demon or whatever his origin is. But we see Akaza pop up at this moment. So if you watch the movie, Akaza's appearance seemed to just come out of nowhere. It didn't seem like he really had a place in it, there was no hint or anything leading up to him arriving at the end of the Mugen train arc. We find out from Muzen that the only reason that Akaza was there at the Mugen train incident to fight Rengoku was just because he was in the vicinity. Well, why was he in the vicinity? He had a previous mission and got redirected once everything was going down on the train, but his original mission was to find a blue spider lily. We didn't get any information on what a blue spider lily is. We don't know what Muzen wants to do with it, but Akaza was unable to obtain it just due to the rarity of the information and not having anybody to go off of or go to in order to try to find the location or the whereabouts of it. So Muzen, you know, he's not mad at the fact that he couldn't find the blue spider lily. He's mad at the fact that you only killed one Hashira. Akaza said that he killed a Hashira, but Muzen's like, and? Demons are superior to humans, that's a given. You should be able to kill a human no matter who they are or what rank they hold, even if they are a demon slayer. Civilians and demon slayers alike, it's in Musen's mind that they are always superior. So for Akaza to say that to him, he gets enraged. All right, he shoots something at him and just has this boy's blood boiling. He's coughing up blood and Musen hasn't even laid a finger on him yet. And Akaza's going through it. And basically this leads up to Musen saying to him, like, you know, you're an upper moon three, and you're struggling, the fact that you even let Tanjiro, someone who's not a part of the Demon Slayer Corps, to even get a hit off on you, shows just how far you've fallen, and it's disappointing. But you know, this is just a regular house, his parents' house, his adoptive parents' house, and he's firing off blast and yelling, very softly but yelling, at a demon who, you know, could be discovered at any moment. So he says, look, Akaza, go. Okay, you don't need to be here. We don't need to talk about this any further. Just get the job done and what I assigned for you to do. Akaza leaves. He's clearly pissed off. And this is when um, the adoptive father comes in and was like, I heard all these loud noises. Is everything okay? And I guess just out of convenience sake, he doesn't see all the glass that was just shattered just a second ago from the open window. We're just not going to mention that at all. Flash forward, our boys, they're recovering in the infirmary. Zanetsu goes to the kitchen to snag some... Uh, 
some uh, red bean buns and bring them back to Tanjiro, but on his way back to see Tanjiro, he's gone. Where did he go? We instantly figure that out. He's going to the Rengoku Manor. So Tanjiro pulls up on Rengoku's crib and starts speaking with his brother before his dad eventually comes out and starts being a dick for no reason other than he's probably drunk. But even though he's drunk, that's kind of to be expected because, you know, his son just died. But he just starts talking so much shit about his son. And Tanjiro is stuck and confused. He's not believing what it is that he's hearing at this point and even tells Senjiro that the funeral is over so stop crying and stop being sad anymore sets Tanjiro off completely. He starts fighting the father. I can't believe what I'm seeing. He has no sword. He's going hand to hand with, with Rengoku's father, but you know, he's defending the boy's honor. I can't really get mad at that. Uh, there's just one problem though. Rengoku the Hashira's father is also a Hashira and Tanjiro is getting his butt worked, okay? Now, this doesn't go really far. Tanjiro, you know how hard his head is literally and metaphorically. He just hits him with a headbutt, knocks them both out. Both of them are fine. Tanjiro comes to, uh, Rengoku's father comes to quicker than Tanjiro did. And, you know, Senjiro, he tells him like, look, he just went out to go get some more sake. So we're probably good for right now. The two, they sit down and have a heart to heart moment. And one of the main reasons why Tanjiro was there was not just to report Rengoku's final words to his family, but also to to try to get more information on flame Hashiras and the flame breathing techniques. So Senjiro, he brings the book to him and then when Tanjiro opens it up, it's completely shredded. Their father is off of the deep end at this point and completely shredded all of the history that they were supposed to be there protecting and adding to. Um, so there's no information there. Senjiro says that he is going to ask his father about, you know, information because there's one thing that's been brought up multiple times this episode and it came from Rengoku's father after he saw Tanjiro's fan earrings, okay? What led to the initial altercation was him saying that, look, Tanjiro, not, he didn't know what his name was, but he was like, oh, you're a sun breather. You're a, prote you're a practitioner of sun breathing. Uh, you're here just to make fun of us and to mean us and look down on us. And Tanjiro was like, what are you talking about? I'm not here to do any of that. I'm just here to report Rengoku's words and try to learn more about flame breathing. I don't know anything about sun breathing. And then, of course, he's going back and he's thinking about the Hinokami Kagura dance that his father used to do that he's seen. And he's trying to link that to sun breathing. But this dude's father is just giving him no information whatsoever. And it's kind of jarring a little bit. I don't remember this in the manga. Well, I do remember this in the manga. I remember him saying this in the manga, but I guess I just like glossed over it. Um, what Rengoku's father is doing is making it out to seem as though there's this hierarchy of uh, breathing techniques. He tells us that the sun breathing technique is the first of all the breathing techniques and every other elemental breathing technique down the road was derived from sun breathing, right? So wind, water, flame, sound, all of that. All of those techniques were derived from sun breathing. But how he's talking about it is as if there's this hierarchy or this caste system like sun breathers who like demon slayers who are sun breathers look down on everybody else. But there's just been no mention of this all the way up until this point. No mention of this in the manga up until this point. No mention of this in season one of the anime. There's just no demon slayers that use sun breathing techniques to confirm what it is that Rengoku's father is saying that Tanjiro is there to do. And so they get nowhere because of that entire situation. So even though Tanjiro got nowhere with um, learning more information about the history of the flame Hashiras and flame breathing techniques, he leaves. Uh, Senjiro goes to report to his father that Tanjiro has just left. He is clearly drunk still. He doesn't want to know anything about the guest. He doesn't want to know what his son's last words were to him. But Senjiro tells him anyway. And he told him that Rengoku said to just take care of yourself. I think that's fair. I think those are reasonable words to give to an abusive father. They're probably more words than you probably should. And of course, what do we see? He begins breaking down. He begins crying. So there is a heart in there. Um, I just want to know what brought him to such a low point that he's this destructive. I mean, he was a Hashira and he's just lost his complete will fighting of living of just peace. He's lost his peace of mind. It's a testament to, you know, what can potentially happen to you if you become a demon slayer. But I'm not going to harp on that for too long. I definitely think that it was needed to talk about. Tanjiro, he's going back to the Butterfly Manor. And just as soon as he gets to the Butterfly Manor, hell breaks loose, okay? Pure hell breaks loose. I forget his name. I probably... Hagen? Hagen something? Uh, the dude who created his sword. The dude who... The blacksmith that created his sword. That's what I'm talking about here. He catches up with Tanjiro. And he found out very quickly that he lost his sword. Now, I guess he doesn't know it's broken. He just knows it's lost. Um, so he chases him till daybreak. They're going back and forth. 
This man Tanjiro's stomach still has not healed when he left the infirmary. So while he was fighting Rengoku's father, while he's being chased by Hagen, his stitches should have been torn open, right? But he survives. Our girl Kei, she's there to save him, fed him, got him together. We have a small time skip forward, about four months, and they're doing all of their training. They're recovered at this point, and they even go off on individual Demon Slayer missions before rendezvousing back at the Butterfly Manor. The second time they arrive at the Butterfly Manor, screams ring out. This is finally where we get the introduction of our sound Hashira, Tengen Uzui. He's causing havoc. Okay, the very first instance of us being introduced to him in a long-term setting is him trying to kidnap two workers at the Butterfly Mansion. Well, he says the reason that he's taking them is because he needs two female Demon Slayer corpse members for a mission. Keep that in mind because it's going to be important later. Our girl K at this moment has a decision to make. Does she allow for Tengen to take two of her friends for a Demon Slayer mission? What we know from her previously and what we know from the manga is that she makes most of her decisions like Two-Face from Batman simply by flipping a coin. She had a discussion with Tanjiro about all of this and basically she doesn't want to do that anymore. She wants to make her own decisions using her head, using her heart. And so as Tengen is walking away with these two, you know, children for real, these are not warriors, right? Um, he's walking away with them. Kate just reaches out and grabs a hold of both of them. He's like, no, you can't take them. Flash forward, Tanjiro gets in the mix. They have an exchange of words. He tries to attack him. Tengen evades it easily because he's a former shinobi. Let's just face it, you know, Tanjiro just isn't flashy enough uh, to handle this whole situation. But what he does do is he offers up uh, their assistance, right? He says, we'll go with you. And Tengen's like, we? Who do you mean we? Because at this point, only Tanjiro's there. And so th now, Anosuke and uh, Zenetsu, they both pop up, right? Because they just got back from their mission at the same time. And I was like, we can go with you. Like, put the two kids down, let them go back with uh, K to the Butterfly Mansion, and we'll go with you. And Tengen is like, all right, bet. The issue is that he specifically said this episode that he needs two female members. Well, Anosuke, Zenetsu, and Tanjiro are anything from that. I really thought that he was going to, you know, take K in this situation and go on the mission with maybe Tanjiro. Maybe it would have been a, a five-person team to the Entertainment District. But no, I guess he really didn't need, you know, the female Demon Slayer members at all because he's settling for these but um again they get updated on the mission they're going to the entertainment district just pure filth and excitement is going to be all throughout this episode i am very curious to see tengen as a character i mean i love him just being honest with you right you know he's the sound hashira he's one of my favorite out of all of the hashiras from what i remember from the manga and it's just going to be a very very entertaining time to see how all of this goes down i can't wait for the animation to get rock and rolling the fight scenes to start rolling out um, characters developing and you know for the heartbreak that we all know will be coming this season um, it's Demon Slayer right uh, that's not even a spoilers I'm not gonna tell you who it is but let's be honest we all saw season one we know how this goes so I look forward to it but I have rambled on long enough if you made it to the end thank you if you are new go plus ultra and smash the subscribe button let's me know you rock with the content that I put out on the channel like the video if you like the video dislike the video if you dislike the video comment on the video your thoughts about what you think is gonna happen in episode 2 of Demon Slayer for this season and how you're enjoying it so far subscribe if you're a brand new and like always until next time i'm out